Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. As an artist and particularly as a printmaker, I end up with a lot of good quality scrap paper that I just don't want to throw away. So I keep those off cuts roughly organised in one of my paper drawers. I have a lot of these long, thin pieces of paper that I've accumulated after printing additions that need to be specific sizes. And one thing I really like to do with these is to make them into tiny little accordion books. So today I'm going to show you how. I love accordion books because they can be a great use of leftover paper, but they also open up a lot of opportunities to make long panoramic drawings and paintings that can be stored in a compact form, like on a bookshelf. They also make really cool sculptural pieces that can stand up on their own for an exhibition. Of course they can be any size that you'd like, not just small, and these same instructions apply to accordion books of any size. For this project I'm using my paper, a bone folder, which is a tool you can use to help make crisp folds, rice paste glue, a brush, some wax paper and a weight. Start by folding the first panel of your strip to whatever width you want your book to be. Accordion books are also sometimes called concertina books and the structure is pretty much what the name implies. You fold the strip back and forth until you have something that approximates the folds that you'd find in an accordion bellows. I'm going to fold this first strip with the footage playing back in real time so you can see more easily how I'm lining up each fold and then I'll speed up the footage for the second strip before slowing it back down again so that you can see how I join those two strips together. After that I'll show you an example of one of the common mistakes that you can make when you're folding these books, followed by an example of a creative style of folding. This particular video will just focus on the folding of the accordion book itself, and I'm going to make a separate video that will show you some different options for covers that can be used on this style of book.
to join two strips of paper together to make one much longer book. I tear the edge of the first paper strip to the point just shy of the full width of the page. I didn't quite tear it far enough with the ruler, so here you can see me using a knife to score very lightly where I want the edge to be, and then I tear it. The torn edge is much better than a cut edge for this purpose because it looks more natural and kind of disappears into the book when you stick it down. The cut edge can be a bit harsh. To start the folds on the next strip, I use the first as a guide until I have the first couple of folds done, and then I put it aside until I'm ready to stick them together. Making the join is pretty easy. You just align the pages up that you're going to stick together, apply some glue to one of the sides, and then stick the pages together so that the raw edges sit in the valley folds. While the glue dries, fold some sheets of wax paper inside to stop any excess glue sticking to the other pages together, and weight the book down with something heavy. Now here I've used rice paste and a brush, but you can also just use like a glue stick or something if that's what you've got.
If you're wondering why I've been lining up and folding each page individually, sort of judging it by eye rather than pre-measuring and folding, it's because the folds themselves and the variation in the paper's thickness will affect the width of each page. It's very easy if you're not paying attention to each fold to end up with a book that isn't a uniform width from the start to the end, as you can see in this example that I've made up, where there's a full 5mm difference between the pages at the start of the book and the end of the book. Along those lines, one fun thing that you can do with this style of book is to deliberately make each page a different width. It can look really cool, especially if it's displayed as a sculpture. This is a really fun format to get creative with, including many things that I haven't shown here at all, such as sewing a signature style book into the valley folds throughout the pages of the book, or getting experimental with the angles of each fold. I hope you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, share and so on and I'll be back soon with a video showing different styles of covers that you can make for an accordion or concertina style book. And if there are any other types of bookbinding you'd like to learn about, please let me know in the comments below. Cheers!